All right, in this problem, a cantilever beam is fabricated by connecting two C-channel shapes on the sides and two plates on the top and on the bottom. There are bolts with the three-quarter of inch diameter that are spaced every six inches for connecting these parts together. In this problem, we want to determine what is the average shear stress in the bolts that is caused by the concentrated force of 21 kips that acts on the tip of the beam. For solving this problem, we need to use the design equation and that is the shear flow in the fastener should be larger than the shear flow applied by the, by the loading. In order to determine that, there are few parameters that we need to determine. First is the shear force. In a cantilever beam subjected to a force at the at its end, the shear force is going to be constant along the length of the beam and that's going to be equal to applied force P. The second property that we need to determine is the moment of inertia. It's 1650 inch to the fourth. It is given, so I don't need to calculate that. The other property that we need to determine is the first moment of area, or capital Q. For determining the capital Q, or the first moment of area, we need to answer this question. What part is connected to the rest of the section by the fasteners? In this case, we can assume that the top plate the one that is shown in blue is connected to the rest of the section, including two C channels on the side and another plate on the bottom part. Q is going to be area multiplied by D. Area is going to be B multiplied by T. The width of the top plate is 16 inches, not 6 inches. So area is going to be 8 squared inch. And D is going to be the distance of the centroid of that top plate to the centroid of the entire section. How much that would be? That would be half of the height of the C-channel plus half of the thickness of the plate, so H over 2 plus T over 2. Given A and D, we can calculate the first moment of area, and that's going to be 50 inch cubed. After determining the first moment of area, we can determine how much is shear flow or lowercase q, and could, that could be determined from VQ over I. V is calculated, Q is calculated, I is given, so I'm just going to plug them in. That means that in one inch of the, this beam, the total force that has to be transferred by the bolts on top of the beam is 0.6364 kips. Now given that, I need to ensure that the bolts are strong enough to carry that shear force. So I'm going to use the design equation. The shear flow that is provided by the bolts is M multiplied by V sub fastener or V sub pen divided by spacing. And that has to be larger than Q. So I'm going to move S to the other side and write down the design equation in this way. From that, we can determine how much is the shear force in each pen. But what is M value here? <coughs> M is the number of bolts that are connecting that part the rest of the section multiplied by the type of connection as you can see in this cross section element there are two bolts that are connecting the parts to the c channels each bolt is going to be sheared once so that would be two multiplied by one which is two so i'm gonna plug them into this equation and that would give us shear force in each bolt equal to 1.91 kips this is the force that has to be transferred by each of those connectors or fasteners on the top and on the bottom. Okay, the problem says how much is the shear stress in the bolt. Shear stress is determined by dividing force over area. Area of a bolt is pi diameter squared over 4. Divide shear force by the area. The average shear stress is 4.32 KSI. This is a very typical problem in built-up members. All right, any question for this problem? Uh, Dr. Libre, why did we use the top plate for the first moment of area? Okay, good question. There are four parts connected together, right? I assume that the top plate, which is shown in blue here, is connected to the rest of the section. Now let me assume something else. Let me assume that the C channel on the left side is connected to the rest of the section. Shear force is going to be in the vertical direction, in the y direction. That means that the axis of interest is z, which is horizontal, right? If the axis of interest is horizontal, what would be the q value for the c channel on the left side? q is area multiplied by d. Area is going to be the area of that c channel. What would be the d value? d is going to be zero because centroid of that c channel is along the z axis that means that the distance is zero so in that case q value is going to be zero for the elements on the sides 
the shear flow here on this part is going to be zero. So we don't need to design our structure for the minimum or zero force. We need to design our structure for the maximum shear flow, where the shear stress is going to be critical. With that, I want to emphasize on this part. If you want to solve the built-up members, you always need to consider the elements that are connected by the bolts that are farthest away from the axis of interest because that are going to give you the highest uh, Q value. In this case, the plate on top is farthest from the Z axis, so I'm going to consider that part as the element that is connected to the rest.